Hey guys, Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. This week I'm going to show you how to take type and put it behind a photograph, like you would on a magazine cover or something like that. All right, one of the things I've been asked a little bit is how do you get type to actually sit behind a photograph so that part of the photograph is actually popping out in front of the type like you see right here on my screen. Uh, it's actually really super easy and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So one of my buddies, Jeff Foster, or was a class clown that made fun of me wearing my hat last week. He's like, dude, when are you getting an MG and a pipe? I guess it makes me look British, so I assume all British people must smoke a pipe or something. But I'm actually originally from New Zealand. But anyway, if I do an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter project to buy an MG, I'll let you know, Jeff, you'll be the first one who can chip in and help me uh, achieve my full um, Britishness. All right, anyway, moving right along. So I'm just going to delete the layers we've already done. Yeah, I'll just select both of those and hit the delete key. So here we go, we just have our regular photograph and we're going to add some type on here. So we're going to add some type, we'll do Photoshop Cafe. And I'm just going to add that in and I'm just going to hit Control T, that would be Command T on Mac for free transform. Holding down the Shift key, I'm just going to drag this out, make it nice and big. Maybe go up there and make it even bigger. Awesome, alright, so we've got this type here. And uh, what we want to do, you see it on magazine covers a lot, we want to put this type behind his head instead of in front of it. This is so easy. I'll show you how to do it. We're just going to hide our type for now. We're going to go down here. We're going to go to our quick select tool. To grab our quick select tool up here, it's underneath the tragic wand, but it's called quick select. So we're just going to grab that. And then I'm just going to just paint around this area here just to make a selection. Now, I don't have to make this, you know, perfect, and I don't have to select everything, because all I need is just this little bit that's going to go over the top of him. I want to make sure we've selected it all. That's pretty awesome. Now, we're just going to hit Refine Edge, and we're just going to make sure that our edge is looking good. So, play around for our radius a little bit if we need to. I'm going to turn that feather all the way down, and uh, it's looking pretty good. We could smoothen it just a touch. Now, if you find, you know, some of these edges are not looking good, you can always paint around them here using this brush, which comes on by default, which is the uh, cleanup brush. So you could do that. We don't really need it there. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit more of the radius. It's looking pretty good. And now make sure we output to new layer with layer mask. Click OK. And now you'll see we've got this new layer with a layer mask. So if we turn on our background, you won't notice anything different, but we'll turn on our type. Now we can take this layer and we can drag it over to the top of our type layer, just like that. All right, so that's a good start. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shadows to the background and some shadow that goes just to the type. So let's have a look here. I'm going to create a drop shadow now just from this uh, top layer here. So let's just go down to the FX and we're going to choose drop shadow. Pop that open, move our layer style box out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And here's the cool thing about the drop shadow. Uh, I'm actually just going to go down, first of all, I'm going to make a default drop shadow. Actually, not that one, sorry. Reset to default. And you can't see anything right now, and that's because it's, uh, notice there it's going down. So what we're going to do is we just need to change the angle. So you can move this angle thing around if you want, like that. Or you can actually just click and drag, and notice there's our shadow. I'm going to pull that shadow up a little bit. In fact, let's go straight up like that. So it's going to go onto the type there. Now I'm going to make it, the opacity up a little bit higher. I want to soften the edges of that. So I'm going to turn the size up. You think that would say softness, but it doesn't. It says size. All right, so that's a pretty decent shadow. Maybe make it a little darker because that type, we're going to assume his head's pretty close to it. And then click OK. So right now we've got a little bit of a problem. Actually, there's a couple of problems. The shadow's over everywhere. We just want it on the type. It's also eating into his arm a little bit there. That looks quite painful. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drop the drop shadow only on the type. So what we're going to do is go to the effects, right click, and now we can choose create layers. Now, one of the cool thing about going down to the create layer is it's actually going to take that layer style and make a brand new layer out of it. So we're going to do this and boom. So what we've got now is if we hide this, notice now we've got our shadow as a separate layer underneath. See that? 
So that's really cool. So we've just got that as a layer. Now we just want it to go to the type. This is so easy. We want to clip it to the type. So with our shadow directly above our type layer, what we're going to do is hit down the Alt key or the Option on Mac, and you'll see this little arrow. When you see that little arrow, click it, and it creates a clipping group. What it's done now is it's clipped the shadow to the transparency of the type. So if I choose this shadow area, notice it will never leave the type area. It's a little harder to see because of the gray background, but you can see there that it's just going to stay within there. So you can reposition it. You don't have to worry about it going outside of the lines. All right, we're almost there. I'm just going to drop a little drop shadow behind the type now. So we're going to grab the type layer, go down to the effects, and we're going to choose the drop shadow. And uh, I'm just going to move this over to the middle here. And once again, you can click and drag on the document to position it. I'm going to put it quite high because I want to make it look like it's far away from our type here. So I'm going to increase the size, make it super soft, and drop the opacity down a little bit to make it look like it's further away. So now we click OK, and you can see there's our final effect. So you can see that was like really easy to do this. Um, so you can practice this and use it on a number of different things. I hope you enjoyed this week's tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button and also subscribe because um, every week I'm making a new tutorial. I'd love you to get my new tutorial every week. Um, so you need to hit that subscribe button. And not just that, I mean, I would really appreciate it too um, because, you know, if I have subscribers, I can make videos and send them out to you. So thanks for those who already subscribe. And also, uh, you know, add a comment. Let me know what you'd like to learn, um, where you get stuck on, maybe this tutorial or other tutorials, or any other Photoshop questions you might have, even random questions about photography and different things like that. I'd be happy to answer those. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, check out all of our other videos and check out all the tutorials we have on PhotoshopCafe.com. Till next time, I'll see you at the cafe.